my name is Ingrida. Thank you for joining our webinar. Today I will tell you of what happens during the first flying season in a Bainisha school. Once the first year of the theory part is finished, students move on the practice in the eardrum. There is a list of inside rules that students cover along with the instructors before any sort of flight training begins. First, punctuality, because timing in aviation is very important and you can never be late. Second, uniform. Students are required to wear uniform at all times while in the eardrum. Third, obedience. Students must listen and obey the instructor and never take any individual actions without instructor's consent. During the introduction, instructor familiarize students with apron, runway, hangars, eardrum zone and of course, the most excited part for students, the fleet. During the first flying season, students use only single engine aircraft like Technam 2002 and perform only visual flights. In most flight schools, each instructor is related to one or two aircraft, meaning that during each flight season, each student will only work with one instructor and one aircraft. The reason for this is to develop better communication between the student and the instructor, as well as have the student to get to know the aircraft. This was a brief overview of the introductory day, so let's move on to the first flight with the instructor. Each student has to take appropriate actions in order to be ready to fly. The list includes things like being properly equipped, arriving early enough at the eardrum for briefing or flight preparations to proceed in an hurried manner, and carrying out required pre-flight checks of the airplane calmly. A typical list of items to check before even leaving home should include Am I fit to fly? All students are required to obtain the appropriate medical certificate before flying is permitted. However, students also have to make sure to get proper amount of sleep every night, because fatigue is the first safety alert. Have I consumed alcohol in the last 8 hours? If you don't drive when you drink, then you definitely do not fly. Am I using pills, tablets, drugs that could impair my abilities? Students should always inform his instructor about any medication he or she is consuming. Do I have cold, stuffed nose, blocked ears or any other upper respiratory complaint? The changes in the ear density or inability to hear the radio communication are safety alerts. So once the personal preparation is complete, students move on to the flight preparation. There are three steps to flight procedure. First, pre-flight briefing. Second, flight. Third, post-flight briefing. Let's have a closer look at the first step. During pre-flight briefing, students and instructor discuss the weather condition, elements which will be performed during the flight, like taxiing an airplane, straight and level flying or climbing. Weight and balance is really important in preparation. It is essential to the safety of every flight that no weight limit is exceeded and that the load is arranged to keep the center of gravity within approved limits. This dictates airplane's ability to fly and be controlled. 
Students must check certain documents to evaluate airplane's airworthiness. These documents include maintenance documents, aircraft technical log, aircraft weight and balance schedule, and certificate of airworthiness. After all these things are checked and then students can start preparing the airplane for flight. If it is the first flight of the day, student who is flying first must do pre-flight inspection procedure. This procedure starts from the cockpit. The best view and reach of the cockpit is when student is standing or crouching on the left wing. Student has to check if all the documents are in the aircraft, check mass and balance sheet, check safety belts, check if magneto switches are off and finally that the parking brake is set. When students can turn on the battery and check ammeter, voltmeter, fuel tank gouges and change fuel tank switch to the left side. Also students need to switch on the landing lights, navigation lights and strobe lights. Now students can proceed to check if all the lights are operating. Starting from the left wing tip, students should notice that red navigation lights are on and strobes are flashing. Then students go directly to check the white light situated on the top of the vertical fin. Then go straight to the right wing tip where green navigation light and strobe light should be checked. Plus, students must check stall warning sensor, which is located in the middle of the right wing when pushed up. Student is supposed to hear an oral stall st signal from the cockpit. The last light which must be checked is called landing light and it is located below propeller. After students make sure all lights are working properly, he or she should come back to the cockpit and switch all the lights off. External walk around involves checking all the surfaces of the aircraft, sign of damage, check wheels, remove pivot cover, and check control surfaces and hinges. Once the external walk around is completed, students moves on to the engine area and oil check, where he or she checks the cooling fluid and oil levels also check for any leaks in that area as well. The last is the front wheel and propeller check. And now pre-flight inspection procedure is complete. Let's move on to the second step, flight. First flight with the instructor lasts maximum of 20 minutes. It consists of the elements that instructor previews. Then student performs along with the instructor and later on student completes the element alone. And then all over again with another element. So let's look at an airdrome traffic circuit example. Every pilot must start flight from taxiing an airplane. How you do that? Using the pedals, of course. Then students must report his or her intentions to ATC and other airplanes at all times and after reaching the holding point of the runway, student must assure that there is no aircraft on the final before entering the runway. Then students may line up the runway and take off. Once the aircraft has taken off, students must go through after takeoff and climbing procedures. And shortly after leveling off, student has to perform approach and landing procedures. Once student lands and taxis the aircraft to the apron, the third part of the flight procedure, post-flight briefing, must be performed together with the instructor. During this step, student discusses the flight with the instructor, covering the flight process and any mistakes that might have been done. The instructor provides suggestions for improvement on the next flight and instructs students how to fill the logbook, without any mistakes. 
Logbook is every pilot's treasure because it is the collection of the experience and plays one of the most important roles in the future career. Probably the most amazing part of the entire first flying season is your first solo flight. Every pilot remembers this experience and feeling for the rest of their lives. According to the regulation, solo flights are permitted after 10 hours flight with the instructor. However, that is a subject to the instructor decision, because student preparation depends on the personality and skills that they portray during the training flight. So 10 flight hours is not a measurement that instructor and students goes by, but rather the whole combination of personal and professional capacities. Every flight academy has different first solo flight traditions. In the video you can see how Baltic Aviation Academy students and instructors inaugurate students into the pilot community after their first solo flight. the many flight training processes involves the practice of entering and leaving eardrum traffic circuit. Usually, every eardrum has approximately 5 nautical mile radius from runway dedicated for various maneuvers flight training. Once student enters the zone, for example, at our eardrum we have West Zone and South Zone, he or she will practice the maneuvers to the perfection making an orbit at bank angle, emergency procedures and other tasks in the presence of instructor. After leaving eardrum area, you have to contact to flight information region frequency and report your position and intentions. However, the main goal of en route flight is to learn how to navigate using visual flight rules chart recognizing landmarks, rivers, roads, railroads and towns. This flight requires filling a flight plan. It must be submitted at least one hour before the takeoff. CTR, which is an abbreviation for Control Terminal Region, is usually located around international airports. To either enter or leave the zone, student has to use special waypoints and change communication frequency assigned to that zone in order to communicate with ATC. Once student is permitted to enter the zone, he or she is under control of the ATC. Students must absolutely obey ATC instructions in this area at all times, except for the emergencies. So to sum up the first flying season, students mostly acquire about 90 hours of flight time and finish their BFR and night BFR flights. Then they move back to studying theory and instrumental flights in FNPT2 simulator. But we will cover this in upcoming webinars. Thank you for watching our webinar and have a wonderful day!